Hi, I'm Katie Pooshpum. And welcome to Theatre Bound, a channel dedicated to all things theatre. And for this video, I'm gonna give you my reasons why I don't really like Irish theatre. I know, I know, calm your tits, okay? Here are my reasons why I don't really like theatre in Ireland. You can take it up with my complaints department. You'll listen. You won't listen. It's rude. So, here are my reasons. And I put in some funny skits to highlight my reasons because... YOLO. Is that what the kids still say? I don't know. Who cares? Reason one. Ireland used to be the land of saints and scholars. It goes without saying there is some outstanding theatre makers that have come from Ireland, both past and present. To name a few, got everyone's favourite Samuel Beckett. Everyone loves him. Brendan Behan, Marina Carr, Gary Hines. Pan Pan, Annie Rhyme, there's loads of them. I could be there all day. Truly outstanding. Their work is not just innovative, it's captivating, it's groundbreaking. Unfortunately, Irish theatre, they become obsessed with only producing work from successful theatre makers, already established theatre makers, and no one else. Which it doesn't leave a lot of room for new work, mostly because no one can get in. You always see the exact same names, a lot of the time the exact same stories, everywhere. It doesn't make it boring, it's just, it's fine. The theatre, that's the whole purpose. It's meant to captivate you, it's not meant to be fine, it's meant to surprise you. So maybe it's just a suggestion to all those established writers free. Maybe it's time to just push them out the tree like a mother bird, just pushing your little babies. Fly! And let some new talent in. me. Yates. <laughs> I know I look a bit different, you know, different glasses. Maybe some people say gender. If I could just get in. Sorry, not tonight, mate. But I'm, I'm WB Yates. Sorry, not tonight, bud. There's probably even a picture of my face inside. Your name's not here. Can't come in. Maybe even five pictures of my face inside. See? Yates. Yatesy. Ooh, please. I've never seen you around here before. Yeah, because I'm dead. And now I'm here, I'm alive, I'm eight. Let me in. Sorry, bud, back the line. Just, uh, go back the line there. Back the line? Sorry, bud, sorry, sorry, bud, bud, back the line, back the line. Okay. Yay. Number two, the Arts Council. The Arts Council, it's an integral cog within the theatre industry. They not only fund the work of Irish theatre makers, but they also exist to raise the standard of Irish theatre. The issue is then, why don't they do this? Funding from the Arts Council in Ireland, it goes to the few favourites. Favourites with a great track record, I totally agree with that. That's fine and understandable, but it's always going to the favourite few. And the thing is, Irish theatre makers, they're literally starving at this point. Money is so scarce, it's nowhere. I feel, and I've witnessed, they don't divide the money appropriately. And then when people start to question the Arts Council, all they keep on saying is, money is limited this year though. It's really limited. That's grand, stick to your excuses. I mean, your reasons. If you're the main funding body for Irish theatre makers to look up to, do your job and be clear. Why are the same people getting the exact same money? In terms of clarity as well, I don't think I've ever heard a person look at the Arts Council's website or the application process and go, oh yeah, that was really clear. I understood everything. That's never happened. But we take that for, oh, it's the Arts Council. They're just confusing and complicated. No, they're meant to be the main funding body for theatre makers. And they're also there to raise the standard of theatre. It's on their website. They talk about it all the time. They have to be clear. Let's stop taking this for face value. People have never looked at that application process as it was easy or understandable. They're usually there standing with like a ball of hair in their hand out of frustration of their own hair. Like I said about the Arts Council before, do what you say you're going to do and be who you say you claim to be. I don't know how yet you go up against a government body to make them change everything about themselves. Fingers crossed they do. Okay, let's do this application. It won't be that difficult. Okay, figures are in. Next question. This is like the last question. Okay. Oh God, 
This application's never gonna end. 10 million questions of the same thing. Oh. Who gives a shit about the Earth Council? I don't care. I don't need their money. I do. I can find money somewhere else. Yeah? Happy? Application? I'll find money somewhere else, okay? I don't need you. <laughs> Why is this so difficult? Oh my god. I don't know how many more times I can say the same thing differently. I just want to sleep. I'm losing the will to live. I'm actually losing the will to live. Okay, last page. Let's do this. Okay, I'm finished. Send. I wonder if they accept bribes. Maybe? I don't even have enough money for a bribe. Get them some biscuits. <laughs> Number three, the National Theatre of Ireland. The National Theatre of Ireland is called the Abbey Theatre. Originally created by Yates and Gregory. Yates and Gregory originally wanted to create a national stage for Ireland to stage new writing and new theatre from Irish theatre makers. Now let's fast forward. For those of you who don't know, the former artistic director of the Abbey Theatre, Faith McConnell, when he was asked about why there was a lack of female playwrights in their programme of activities for 2016, he said that there wasn't enough plays ready yet and ended the sentence with, then's the breaks. Then's the breaks. That's not an answer. And essentially got away with this. There was no correction made to the program of activities and there was no sincere apology ever made and no consequences. Absolutely none. Which, when you think about it, is absolutely insane. He did not represent program of activities that reflects the theatre makers of Ireland. Even after massive protests, nothing changed. It's a very depressing moment and one that will definitely go down in theatre history as a very depressing day for Irish theatre. So then new artistic directors came in, fresh new ideas, new perspectives, what's gonna happen? So they came in and then announced that they are programming what they call a greatest hits year. <laughs> programmed of already established writing, no new writing. It's basically the exact same heads, exact same stories. And that's my issue with the Abbey. Same shit, different day. If it's not being exclusive, they're being boring. They have a massive responsibility. They are the National Theatre of Ireland. And they're doing, in my eyes, nothing. The Gay Theatre get less funding than the Abbey Theatre, yet bring in the same money Sometimes more. Why does that happen? Oh yeah, they know exactly their artistic efficacy of what they want to achieve and they do it. The Abbey Theatre need a serious overhaul to get rid, to cut the shit. We need to stop being so delicate around the Abbey Theatre. What they're doing, and they've even been investigated by judges from overseas that came over to, I will leave a link in the description, came over to investigate the standard of working at the Abbey Theatre. It was poor. Stop relying, as they say in Repos Drag Race, stop relying on that body. Stop relying on the Abbey Theatre's name. It's time for something new and exciting. You'll get more money, just saying. I love this song, Tune. Is this the same song again? This is the same song. This is the fifth time. Seriously, can you play a different song? I would, if this song wasn't such a hit. That's terrible logic. So I'm gonna have to listen to this song again. Great. Number four, closed shop. For a lot of theatre makers, that phrase, with respect, to Irish theatre, it doesn't really come as a surprise, but theatre in Ireland, it is a closed shop. If you don't believe me, look back to the past 10 years of theatre in Dublin and you'll see the exact same faces all the time. There's a reason for that. People, they kind of only help out their friends. Again and again and ugh. There is no beneficial apparatus within the Irish theatre industry for growth in your career. By this I mean there is no clear path and no clear route that you can venture down. No matter how far you get in your career and no matter how much success you reach, 
People only ever recognise you within Ireland until you get a bit of success overseas. Then the theatre scene back in Ireland's like, oh god, let's get that person back over. It's a really big problem. You'll hear a lot of theatre makers, they just eventually, they just have to go overseas, that they can't reach the same success in Ireland until they do so. It's very strange. It's the only way to crack into that shop, to break in like a thief. It's a weird one. I don't get that one. Reuben, go away. I don't have time for this. And I don't have time to go see your play, The Reuben Chronicles. And it's just the same thing. It's just you staring at the audience like a creep. It's weird, okay? Where's he gone? Ah, Reuben, go away. So weird. Okay, fine, I'll go. It's only because of those cool glasses. Good fashion choice. Why did I agree to this? It's the same thing, but now you have glasses and a scarf on. And he charged me full price. Number five, lack of resources. Resources are so limited in Ireland, both physical and digital. Digital is really important. If we were to compare ourselves to the UK, although now keeping in mind they're a lot bigger, have a lot more money than us, they still, they have an abundant amount of online resources for theatre makers specifically. Detailed information about what's happening within the theatre scene at the moment, current workshops, current practices. Now we do have online services here and, and created in Ireland, places like Theatre Forum, but they'll tell you their funding is so, so low. It makes no sense, particularly with something that is a resource, because without that resource, how is the theatre scene going to grow? For Ireland to be a competitive and innovative force within the theatre industry on a global scale, we need more resources. Maybe the Arts Council should sort that one out. Hi, I'm Katie Pooshpong, and I'm here to tell you the benefits of the Arts Council cutting funding. With limited funding from the Arts Council, I was able to get creative with my work. Instead of buying more paper to write on for my work, I just write really small now. Perfect! You just write tiny like they do in prison. See? Paper saver. Instead of lighting equipment for my videos, I use the sun. No, 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 don't go sun, I need you. Just stay there for like half an hour. Cool, thanks sun. No, <laughs> clouds, no. And instead of a pen, I just use a straw dipped in ink. How vintage. I love writing on a straw. So get on board at the Arts Council, and like me, you can get funded by 10 euro. Yay. So stop questioning the Arts Council's cuts and get on board, or else they'll cut you. With money, not a knife. Boop. Thank you so much for watching these images and sounds. Be sure to leave a like, maybe a comment. I'd love to hear your views about what annoys you about theatre, not just in Ireland, just anywhere. What issues do you think exist within theatre land? In saying all that with Irish theatre, there's a lot of great new festivals popping up. A few links in the description of things that I like about Irish theatre that exist right now, which make me really happy inside. So I'll leave all that in the description as well so you can check it out. Go support them. Don't forget to subscribe. I upload two videos a week which are full of alternative theatre information and alternative theatre making. Weekly. Yay. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye. But if anybody from the Arts Council is watching, we should totally sit down and chat. I swear I'm a lot nicer in real life, but you're buying coffee.